Hello, so today's video is going to be all about the scimitar pens. Now, you might be familiar with these, they're pretty retro, and the idea of a decimeter pen is that it measures radiation, letting you see what an accumulated dose is, and you simply hold these up to a bit of light to basically see your dose. Now, these have pretty much been totally replaced by little electronic units now. Well, these are technically electronic units, but I mean like digital kind of little readout units. However, since like the 1950s, these were a pretty common thing. I think some industries still use these because they probably do have some pros and cons compared to, well, a lot of cons, but they probably do have some pros compared to some of the more modern units. But they're interesting things. So I thought in this video I'd do sort of try and do a complete video explaining what they are and showing a few different types. So here we have the famous US CDV type ones. Uh, the seven, this is the V742, they did a load of these, basically it was just the radiation range was different. Now unfortunately I think these are going to be pretty much impossible to show on camera. You can maybe just about see there what these look like if you hold them up to a camera, but the problem is you can never really get enough light coming through these and the camera at a good angle to see it. But how they work, uh, this is a Soviet style DKP50, although this is a Polish one, this particular one. And this is a British 200 centigrade uh, military and civil defence type one. Again, you're probably going to struggle to see these through the camera. So, the point of these is you would wear them on your body. Generally, you'd wear more than one just to, you know, in case one goes wrong or the reading's different between the two. So, you take a reading between the two or you take a lower reading. So, I'll try and explain how these work. So. You'd have them in a breast pocket normally, um, the idea being that then it's close to your vital organs and basically any radiation that passes through the pen has also passed through you. And how these work is I actually have a disassembled one here, and this is the main unit in it. Everything else is basically like little microscopic bits of glass that, you know, blow up an image. But what you have here is an ionisation chamber with the little quartz sort of um, fibre bit there. So how these work, you look through them and you see a line, and the line moves as you get more and more irradiated. Now how these work is basically you have a little tiny radiation ionisation chamber built into this. So this is a combination of a capacitor, basically a bit like a battery, it holds an electrical charge, um, an ionisation chamber and the fibre. And how these work is basically as they become irradiated it drains the battery. As the battery drains the needle moves, the fibre moves, showing you what your dose is. Everything else basically keeps it all assembled together. They're a bit more complicated than that but we don't need to go into that in this video. That's the fundamentals of how they work. There's generally some bellows attached to them and some other bits but the point is most of what you're going to look at is you know this unit. They're normally always sort of assembled and these, you know, are the radiation detecting bit of it and the capacitor. Now they work on a very, very simple principle, and that is basically the radiation messes with battery lives and capacitors and everything, so they work on kind of reverse things. So you know normally if you have a phone or something and it's 100% charged, that means the battery's full. When it's 0% charged, it's empty. These work on the inverse. So when it says zero, that's when it's fully charged. When it gets to whatever the top radiation reading is, that's when it's fully discharged. Um, so how these work is basically the more radiation it accumulates, the more the battery is draining. So as the numbers go up, you're losing battery life. So, we'll see the problem with these units is, obviously, over time the capacitor will lose energy. As that loses energy, it will give you a radiation reading, even if it's not accumulated any dose. Now, they made these in all sorts of radiation ranges, you know, ones that would go up to a fatal dose, you know, something like 500 plus Rontgen, Rad, uh, Centigray, or, you know, something like 5 Sieverts. And some would only go up to, you know, like a millironcon range, some that would go up to, you know, radiation sickness range, but otherwise alright. They were made for different measurements. Quite often soldiers were given ones that wouldn't show a lethal dose, because they didn't want soldiers panicking. So, they're charged with a charger. Um, these are quite simple to operate. How these work, I'll try and demonstrate this here, is you have your pen. The pen is pushed into here. When the pen is pushed in, you'll see that there's a light on in there. Um, basically, it's providing power. So what you then do is, while this is providing power, and it's a bit difficult to do this while I'm standing up, you um, adjust the little turn dial there. Weirdly, as you go to zero, you're actually charging it. And what it's doing is it's just putting a direct current sort of charge into the capacitor. 
so that will do. And what we've done there is we've basically just put reset this to zero so we fully charge the battery. Um, so generally with these you'd get a kit, you'd get a charger and loads of the pens. So here's the British charger, very similar to the American one, but we're going to look at some different types of designs. So if you're wondering what a full decimeter kit would look like, here's a West German one uh, with a very long name on it because it's Germans, Strahlendosimeter, uh, which means radiation decimeter basically. So if we open this up, it's got a weird little um, bit on it there. This is basically what your kit would look like when you... Oops, I'm going to smash my fingers there. Um, you get a load of decimeter pens and you get your charger and there might be like a little instruction booklet and everything. This comes with this particular set comes with six zero to fifty centigrade models and six zero to five hundred centigrade models. And as you can see there it says one R equals one CGY, which means one rad or one Ronkgen equals one centigrade. Uh, it technically doesn't in realistic terms, but most militaries just equal to centigrade or Ronkin. So how these work, again, same principle that you um, you know hold them up to the light to see your accumulated dose. And depending on the application, you know, they'd be in all sorts of different ranges. Now, these were the cheapest of all radiation uh, detecting devices to produce. Um, Geiger counters obviously cost a lot more money. Um, ion chambers, even though they're quite simple, cost a bit more money. These do actually use an ion chamber inside them, but, you know, I mean an actual kind of Radiac style um, CDV715 kind of kit. So, again, these are quite simple. The idea being that your kit comes with a charger device. You know, the idea being with all of these that you have one of these. You would get in your pens out. You can obviously reset them and charge them with this, but you can also read them with this. So what we'll do is we'll pop the pen in. We'll put it into the read position on here rather than the um, reset position. And then you might be able to see through there. There's the light and the reading. That's probably the best you're ever going to see one of these in a video because um, this actually holds it quite firmly onto the light source. But yeah, the idea being with these basically that you've got something that you know you hold up to light and it gives a reading. Now, there's been several different designs of these done in the past, some more clever than others. My favourite weird sort of design that's been tried is probably the Soviet uh, ID1 set, which I will show you now. So I've get given out some of these decimeters to friends who wanted them as curiosities, but here's a Soviet ID1 set. So basically, this one. There's a few of the decimeter pens left in there, as you see, similar sort of setup, you get a load of pens with the charger. They work in the exact same way, you hold them up to the light. Uh, this one goes from 0 to 500 rad, so 0 to 500 Ronken or centigrade. The interesting thing of this one when you charge it is it actually has a little line left of the 0 where you're meant to charge it to that, so when you pull it off, even if you discharge it a bit as you pull it off, you know, a bit like if you inflate your tyres when you're pulling the... Um, tire inflator off, sometimes a bit of air hisses out, it's that kind of thing, they're showing you a line that you should inflate it to that's slightly above zero, so then when you pull it off, even if you lose a bit of um, energy, it's still at zero. But this is a very interesting kit, because this one is designed not to even use a battery. You've got a mirror that reflects light, uh, the pen goes in there, and this uses piezoelectric current to charge it, basically, so um, when you've got your pen on there, you can charge it even without um, any batteries. You just basically get a flashlight or the direct sunlight reflecting on the mirror looking up and then you use a hand crank to do the charge. One of the most clever designs I've seen. I've seen some that are hand crank designs and some that, you know, obviously battery designs, but I've never seen one before where they'd actually said, let's incorporate a mirror with a hand crank design so um, you don't even need, you know, a proper light source. Um, so yeah, pretty clever. So yeah, the advantage of these compared to Geiger counters and everything else was they were massively cheap to make. Um, obviously if you think about the logistics of this, you can make shitloads of these for the same price you could make one Geiger counter or one iron chamber. Because when you've got all the factories set up, you know, they're very convenient and easy to wear. Bear in mind, these are from the same period of time when Geiger counters weighed a few kilos each and were pretty bulky, took a load of big batteries. You could have something like this. So the idea was that you generally wear, say, two on your person. So I'll demonstrate that, although I've not got the right kind of shirt on for it. Um, you basically, normally, I mean a lot of times people would just be issued one, but the idea was you'd wear two, that way, you know, you've got a bit of margin for error if there was any problem. Um, so you wear them on your person, 
you're in a radiation field, what you can do is continuously look at them every now and then to check if you're absorbing radiation so you've got an early warning system. So, um, they're pretty good in that regard. Um, obviously very cheap to make. The issue is, obviously, as I said, they discharge over time. The late Cold War ones tend to be better than early Cold War ones as in having good capacitors in them that don't discharge over time. Um, if you drop them, that can sometimes make them go wrong. Either it damages them from dropping them, causing them to short circuit, um, you know, or lose the battery charge. Um, obviously, if you're in the field and they get knocked, the issue is that you're going to get an artificial reading on them or they're going to stop working. Um, there's other types of dissimeter devices, there's like film badge dissimeters and things like that, but these were like the very common ones and they're quite cool because you can just look through them in the field or wherever you are and see what reading you're getting. So they're very, very practical. Now, some advice. If you are buying these now, uh, not as a collector's item like I do, but actually as serious radiation measuring devices, that's not the best idea in the world, just simply due to age. Um, you know, and it's also a lottery. If you buy a decimeter set with a load of decimeters in, you're probably going to luck out and at least get a few that work. I was really lucky with that German set that all 12 actually seem to be working fine. Um, but I've bought them before, you know, where you buy a bulk load and only like one or two work properly in the full bulk load. Some will instantly discharge the moment you charge them or won't even hold a charge at all. Others you'll get the issue that, you know, like you'll expose it to a low dose of radiation for an hour and you check it and it's giving you a really high reading as in the capacitor's draining really fast when radiation hits it. But they're pretty cool old devices. Now, a bit of random trivia for anybody that is interested. If you see that, especially if that bit was removed, does that remind you of anything? The Star Wars Imperial Officers wore these. Those are those little things that are on there, just because they are old surplus. I think they're meant to be code decimeters in Star Wars. In reality, they're radiation decimeters. But anyway, yeah, the point of these was they were very cheap. Um, you know, they showed you an accumulative dose, not what you're actually receiving. Although, you can calculate what radiation you're receiving. So, let's say I'm looking at this one into light. And it says at the moment, zero centigrade. Let's say in an hour's time, it says one centigrade. And then I checked it in another hour's time, it says 2 centigrade. We know I'm receiving 1 centigrade of radiation per hour. That's the dose of radiation. So, as long as you're using them in that way, they can be done like that. Another good thing of this, because they don't really need batteries, because they've got the charge capacitor inside them, is you could have a load of these if they were fully charged up, put them outside a fallout shelter or somewhere, come check them later and see what the dose is on them, so you can get an idea of what the dose is outside without having to have somebody exposed to radiation continuously reading a meter. So, they're good for that. So, there you go, hopefully that's explained a bit. I'll probably do a video in the future at some point doing like a big collection of these where I'll lay them all out, all the different ones I've got. Again, they show different radiation units in different measurements, different things, some are better than others. These have pretty much all been replaced by digital units now, because obviously if you have something like a Therapy or whatever, or a SOEX, you can have something that both shows you what dose you're actually currently getting, and it has a screen where it shows you the log dose. They're very practical, but these were the retro kind of style ones. I really like these just because of how cool and old they are. But again, they're not the most practical things in the world for reasons we've said. They discharge over time. If you drop them, you can break them. You know, there's lots and lots of requirements for them. But uh, if you ever, you know, wanted something that measures radiation and you didn't want to shell out loads of money on a Geiger counter or whatever, if you manage to find one of these sets quite cheap, it's probably worth getting one just so you can constantly charge them and check them. You know, and you can also leave them in different rooms in the house if you know they're working and see do any of them pick up radiation faster than others. They're not really good for measuring background radiation. The ones that are designed for people that work in hospitals that went up to things like 100 milli and 200 milli and they might be practical for that, but the ones that show a doomsday dose of radiation like most of these, which is the hundreds of ronkguns or centigrades or rads, yeah, they're not going to be, you know, not going to be very good for that. Um, just because, obviously, I think the capacitor is going to discharge faster over time than the accumulated dose of radiation. But, you know, another good thing with these, say, for example, you have some radioactive samples, you can put these in a box of the radioactive samples, check them a day later and see what, you know, your box of radioactive samples gives off a day. Much safer than standing over it with a Geiger counter for ages, trying try to take a reading because you're not exposing yourself to radiation. If you leave these somewhere, then come back and check it a day later or whatever. But yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, just to show you charging one again, this is the old British style charger. Again, you can probably buy your nation's versions on eBay or wherever pretty cheap. So you hold it down, onto the contact, the light comes on, you then adjust the dial to find the zero, 
Again, easier said than done. Tell you what, the easiest way I can demonstrate it here, or oh, the door's open, I want to close that first, is push this against the door, push that onto there, if I look through it, there we go, then dial it in, there we go, I'll take it off just slightly to the side of zero, and there we go. So, again, pretty simple to operate and use. Unfortunately, these never look good on camera, just because of, you know, trying to get a camera to look through an optic. Um, but they're good old interesting bits of kit. You know, if you can get a load cheap as a novelty, probably worth doing. I've generally found of these, if you can find a decimeter box set for a good price, um, you know, like the £40 I paid for this one, ow, my thumb, um, that's a lot better than buying the, them individually for like 5 to £10 each. But there you go. The scimitar kits, they're pretty cool. Technically, in most countries, the most mass-produced bits of radiation de detecting device, because often a lot of nations made them with the idea that a civil defence personnel or a soldier, you know, they'd have one or two decimeter pens each, where quite often they'd have, like, one Geiger counter or iron chamber unit per, like, 20 or 100 men or something. So, they're very good in that regard, mass-produced. I've rambled on long enough in this video. But hopefully you've learnt quite a bit about how good old-fashioned decimeter pens work.